So as strange as this may seem, um, about a week before it all really kicked off with the COVID, COVID virus, uh, coronavirus, whatever you want to call it, um, I came down to see a very good friend of mine, Paul Edwards, and uh, I've been stuck here ever since. And whilst I've been here, he asked me um, to do a video making cottage pie. So basically that's what I'm going to do, is make a cottage pie. And this one goes to Paul Edwards, and he's also made some uh, a lovely Jack Daniels for me, which is a lot stronger than what I normally drink, but that's Paul, that's why he's a good mate of mine, see. Um, so, to Paul, thank you very much for inviting me. And, you know, let's hope this... Uh, You're welcome, mate, any time. Thank you very much. Um, this is lockdown, and uh, basically, we're just having, doing the best we can whilst we're stuck indoors. So, this video is cottage pie, and enjoying it whilst I'm making it. Hope you're enjoying yourselves too. Um, now, there's a difference between shepherd's pie and cottage pie, and uh, if you do know the answer, uh, leave a comment below. Um, today we're cooking cottage pie, uh, and I'll tell you the answer at the end of this video. I am a cow. I am a sheep. So without further ado, the ingredients I'm going to be using today are... Mm, let's get ready to rumble! Now before you even think about going near any food, wash your grubby hands, because we don't want you giving everyone coronavirus. The next thing we're going to do is prepare everything before you start cooking. Don't try and prepare stuff whilst you're cooking, it doesn't work. All that's going to happen is you're going to suddenly realise you've got something missing. Next thing you're going to be running around like a headless chicken trying to find it. And when you do finally get back to what you're cooking, it will be burnt and the dog will be thinking it's Christmas. It was at this moment that he knew. He f***ed up. Always remember the four P's. Poor preparation. It's poor production. make sure your knife is sharp, especially when cutting onions. The most dangerous tool in a kitchen is a blunt knife. It will slip, cut your finger and there will be blood everywhere. And no one wants your skanky blood all over their vegetables. Get yourself a little knife sharpener. There's an affiliate link down below under this video. You can click on that and it will take you straight where you can buy a nice cheap little knife sharpener. It doesn't cost you any extra to use that link. It's an affiliate link, which means I get a little commission, which helps me buy more ingredients to make more videos so you can enjoy some more of these lovely little recipes.
and so with all the preparation done, it's time to get on to the next exciting part. Let's get cooking! Put your sliced potatoes in a saucepan and pour some boiling hot water over them. Put them on the stove. And don't forget to light the gas because otherwise they won't cook. Next thing we're going to do is put a pan on the stove, um, put some more, pour some oil in and add the onions. Um, let them cook and brown off just a little bit. Don't overcook them though. As soon as the onions start turning a nice golden brown color, add the mince to the pan. Give the mince a good stir and let it cook until it starts to change colour. Once the mince starts changing colour, add the carrots. Don't overcook the mince because it will get chewy and the last thing you want to see at the dinner table is grandma with a face like a bulldog chewing a wasp. <laughs> After about five minutes, boil some water up in the kettle, pour it into the mix about two inches above the mince, give it a good little stir and leave it to simmer for about an hour. So go pour yourself a drink, crack one out if you have to, but don't think this is a chance for a leisurely stroll along the beach because you haven't got time for that. If you do that, by the time you get back, it will just be a shriveled up mess in the bottom of the pan. What the? A few moments later. When the potatoes are cooked, take them off the stove and strain all the water off them. Make sure the potato is mashed nice and fluffy because if not, you won't be able to spread it on top of the mince. It's not rocket science. Add some butter, milk, salt, pepper and give them a good mashing. taste your food when you're cooking it and when you finish with a spoon get rid of it don't stick it in something else to taste ah! it's got your skanky filthy dirty saliva germs all over it use a fresh one next thing you want to do is make sure your oven is turned on and getting hot this should be normally done about half hour before you start cooking anything you need it on quite a high setting because all you're basically doing is browning the cheese off on the top of the cottage pie. Um, the rest of the cooking's already pretty much been done. Next thing we're gonna do is finish cooking off the mince. So after cooking for about an hour, this mince is now ready for the next stage. Add a little bit more water if necessary, but remember you do want this mix quite thick. Mince meat can give off quite a bit of fat when it's cooked. If you wanna be a health freak, 
and lose half the flavour, then go ahead and skim some of that fat off. Mix in some Bisto gravy granules until it starts to thicken up. Yes, I am using Bisto gravy granules. If you want to use red wine, garlic, rosemary, or any other um, foreign ingredients that you might want to add to it, go ahead and do so. But please, don't call it cottage pie. This is a traditional British dish. It's more patriotic than the Queen. Generations of British English families have grown up eating cottage pie. Leave it as it is, it is what it is. Cottage pie holds rank with the likes of roast dinners, English breakfasts, bangers and mash, and anything else you'd like to chuck into the equation. We're proud of this dish, we're British. It is the way it is. Our parents grew up with it, our grandparents grew up with it, and it will continue to be eaten for our children and our grandchildren and generations to come. Okay, that's enough of that. Hold on to your seats, because this is where it gets really exciting. Sprinkle some grated cheese on top of it and pop it in the oven for about half hour. Next thing you want to do is get your tin of baked beans. In fact, you know what? If you want me to do a video on how to heat up baked beans in a microwave, please just leave a comment below this video and um, I'll send you a link. So, as always, the proof of the pudding is in the tasting. And I've only got one hand here, so I'm gonna have a little go with my left hand. I'll do some tasting for you, Kev, because I know what it's no. What do you reckon, Paul? Is, that, is that to your satisfaction? You ready? Traditional cottage pie. What do you think of that? <laughs> Without burning your lips. Wow. Do you know what? That tastes amazing. That's just amazing. Is that to your satisfaction? Yeah, wow, yeah. yeah. And, he's a, and he's a fussy eater as well. So, oh, I'm a really fussy eater. Um, yeah. If you can please talk, Paul, you can please anyone. I'm going to have a little mm. try myself. Mmm. Mmm. Really basic. But that's cottage pie. That's what it is. It's a basic traditional dish. Do you know what? That's made my day now. That's <laughs> that made your day. <laughs> Chef Travels, I'm Kevin Anderson. Thanks very much for watching and do try this recipe. It's simple, sweet, but very traditional. See you on the next mission. See you on the next one.